It has been nearly 500 days, over 12,000 hours, and more than 42,000 seconds since Apple announced the 2012 MacBook Pro. I don't know about you guys, but I think we are long overdue for a 2013 model. Today's video was made possible by Squarespace. What is going on tech peoples, Jonathan here with TLD, hope you guys are doing well and based off my previous video, it looks like a ton of you guys really, 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 really wanted to see a what to expect video regarding the 2013 MacBook Pro, so here we are. Now before I continue, I know there's going to be that one guy who chips in and says, fail, there's an early 2013 model on Apple's website. Those are my troll typing hands, by the way. And before you get your panties in a bunch, Jimmy, that was a silent spec bump and not a complete refresh. So those were still based off Ivy Bridge, the same exact platform, same video card, same form factor, same price. The only difference was a small speed bump on the CPUs, and it really wasn't a lot. The baseline 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro jumped from a 2.3 gigahertz processor up to a 2.4 gigahertz processor so there was not much at all and that is the difference between a silent spec bump and a complete platform refresh that we should see later this week. So as many of you guys are aware Apple is set to announce two new iPads at their upcoming October 22nd event but on top of that we should see at the very least news or an update on the upcoming Mac Pro, a possible Haswell Mac mini refresh, an official release date on Mavericks, and more chances of a yes than a no is the announcement of the 2013 MacBook Pro. Now, because we've already had this year's 2013 MacBook Air refresh, that gives us some really solid info and insight on what to expect with this year's MacBook Pro. And for a fact, Jack, we can guarantee to see Intel's fourth generation Haswell processors, which really don't bring a whole lot in terms of performance gain. We're talking maybe eight to 15%, but maybe more important than performance at this point is power efficiency and better battery life. If anybody owns a 2013 MacBook Air, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. I've actually been using the latest 2013 13-inch MacBook Air as my main portable machine. And while I do miss the overall power of the MacBook Pro and obviously the Retina display, the battery life has been absolutely ridiculous. And I mean that in the best possible way. I can no joke edit a complete video on Final Cut Pro 10, export it, and still have like 60% battery left after that's all done. And while I don't expect to see 13-hour battery life on either the 15 or 13 inch MacBook Pro, even if we can add two to three hours, that would be an awesome thing. Now next up in the for sure department, we can pretty much bank on seeing faster PCI Express flash storage in these new MacBook Pros, just like we saw not only on the MacBook Air, but also the 2013 iMac. So if you guys were not aware, the 2012 MacBook Pro clocked in anywhere from the high 300s up to the mid 500s in terms of megabytes per second in both read and write on the SSD speeds. With the refresh, I would expect to see performance gains of anywhere from two to 400 megabytes per second on top of those speeds. So it's safe to say we should see some very very speedy SSDs on these new MacBook Pros. Now jumping over to the 13 inch MacBook Pro for a second, I think my dream portable machine would be a 13 inch MacBook Pro with retina display obviously, a quad core processor and dedicated graphics. Now, as much as I would love for that to happen, I don't expect either a quad-core CPU or dedicated graphics on the 13-inch MacBook Pro, but at the very least, Haswell brings Iris Pro graphics, which are pretty solid in terms of integrated graphics, so that in combination with the better performance and better battery life should make for a pretty sweet mobile editing machine. Now, as far as the 15-inch MacBook Pro, even though Apple opted to go AMD for the upcoming Mac Pro, I think they're gonna stick with NVIDIA because we saw that on the iMac, so I would expect to see faster 700 series mobile NVIDIA cards in these MacBook Pros. And on top of that, in terms of my for sure, more than likely predictions, I do also expect these MacBook Pros to feature 1080p FaceTime HD cameras and to be the first Macs that ship with OS Mavericks. Now conversely, jumping over to the not so for sure speculation, there has been some chatter and some rumors of a redesigned thinner and lighter Retina MacBook Pro, possibly in the ballpark of 15 to 20% lighter. Now obviously that would be a welcome change and I would personally love that, but normally I don't necessarily bank on those type of things just because the Retina MacBook Pro was new last year, but maybe because it's been so long since Apple's updated, they are going to do this. So I will definitely cross my fingers for that. Now, me personally, I think it is time to get rid of anything that is not Retina in terms of the MacBook Pro lineup. So that would effectively drop prices across the board. So that would mean in my perfect situation, we would see the 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro come standard with a Retina display and flash storage and start out at $1199. 
That would also bring the baseline price on the 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro down from $21.99 to $17.99. And I actually think that's not too far fetched because as many of you guys are aware, because of iPads and tablets, the PC and notebook market is shrinking. And not only do I think that would be a fantastic way for Apple to boost sales, but also breathe new life into that market. So lastly, closing this video out in terms of what I would love to possibly see in terms of dream wishes, and you guys do the same. If there was one thing that you could have, anything at all on these MacBook Pros, let me know with a comment down below. But I would absolutely love, love, freaking love to see a 4K display on the 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro. I would probably pass out just from losing all my bodily liquid is just uh, from having a geek chasm. It would be insanely awesome. Now, I know that's more than likely not gonna happen, but I have that hope in me. So Tim Cook, make it happen. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Hopefully I covered it enough. Definitely let me know if you agree or disagree with my predictions with a comment down below. If you guys did enjoy the video and you are feeling like being awesome, make sure to hit that like button. It is much appreciated. And also, if you guys enjoy the content that I put out, definitely show some love to Squarespace for making this video possible. Now, if you guys have been looking to set up your own website or tech blog, for example, Squarespace is probably the simplest and easiest way to do that. They have over 20 killer looking templates where you literally just drag and drop your content in. You can also tweak it if you like. It is optimized automatically to look good and it doesn't matter if it's your desktop, tablet, or smartphone. They feature awesome 24 seven support based out of New York City and pricing starts out at just $8 a month with a free domain if you sign up for a year. So again, if you have been looking to create your own website or blog, you can do that, get a killer deal and support Support the channel at the same time by using the offer code TLD10 at checkout. That'll get you a free trial, no credit card required, and 10% off your order if you decide you like it and want to keep using it. And that will all be linked down below. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for all your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you are watching this video and it is past October 22nd, then chances are I probably have my hands on one of the new MacBook Pros. So look out for an annotation right here or check the description down below and that will link you to coverage on that MacBook Pro. At the very least, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. That way you don't miss out on any future tech coverage. If you guys have any questions on these upcoming MacBook Pros or tech in general, hit me up with a comment down below or the better place to get a hold of me is on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Those are also linked down below along with the gear that I use to make these videos. Again, this is Jonathan with TLD and I'll see you guys later.